In this video, you are going to learn what is conditional independence assumption. Suppose I want to estimate the effect of college degree on salary. I can only estimate the causal effect of college on salary if college is independent from the error term. College is an endogenous variable. College is a choice variable. People self-select to go to college. It's clear that college is not independent from the error term. But in econometrics, we have a trick that you call conditional independence assumption. If you condition to a variable h, now then college is independent from the error term. At least, this is what is written mathematically. See that there is no college here? If these two terms are equal and I can discard c, that means that c is independent of the error term. What is h? h is a high mark in a test. You want to control for ability and avoid the omittable variable bias problem. Let's assume that in the world there are two types of people, red and blue, and they are equally distributed. The wage of red people without college degree is 10, and if they have a college degree, they make $20. The wage of blue people without college degree is $8, and if they have a college degree, they can make $12. The average causal effect of a college degree for the red people is $10, 20 minus 10. And the average causal effect of college degree for blue people is $4, 12 minus 8. If you average both 10 and 4, you get the average causal effect, that is 7. Now, let's assume that you have this data. See that you have 10 blue people without college degree that make $8. And here you have 6 red people without college degree that make $10. The mean salary of people without college degree is $8.75. You get this value multiply 10 times 8, 6 times 10, and divide by 16. Now, let's see the data if people with a college degree. 6 blue people make $12, and 10 red people make $20. And the mean salary of people with college degree is $17. If you run ordinarily square, we get this result. See that the 8.75 is the intercept, is the mean salary of people without college degree. And 8.25 is the impact of college degree. This number is just the difference between 17 minus 8.75. The problem here is that ordinary square overestimate the impact of college. Remember, the average causal effect is $7. Why this happen? We have more red people with college degree, and the impact of college degree for the red people is higher than blue people. Note the category no college. Blue people is overrepresented there, 10 against 6. Now, let's understand why red people is more likely to get a college degree. The probability of getting a college degree, given that you get a high mark in a test, is 3 quarter. And the probability of getting a college degree, if you get a low mark in a test, is 1 quarter. Now, let's assume that red people has more skills. The probability of getting a high mark, given that you are red people, is 3 quarters. And the probability of getting a high mark in the test, if you are blue people, is 1 quarter. With these probabilities, we can calculate the probability of getting a college degree if you are red people. You might want to pause the video and see the intermediate calculations. The probability of getting a college degree, given that you are ready, is 62.5%. And the probability of getting a college degree, given that you are blue, is only 37.5%. We can construct a more complete table. Now that we know that red people is more likely to go to college, see that you have more red people in the category no college and high test score, and this is because of the high test score. In the category college and the high test score, we also have more red people, 9 against 3. In the category no college and the low test score is the opposite, we have more blue people, 9 against 3. And in the category college and the low test score, we have more blue people, 3 against 1. Now, let's run a regression with the variable age and the interaction between college and the high mark test age. 
See, the intercept is 8.5. It is the people with no college and the low test score. For example, how I can get $18? That is the category of the college with high test score. Put one for each dummy variable in the equation and sum up all these slopes. 8.5 plus 1 plus 5.5 plus 3, you get 18. But the question is, how we can calculate the average causal effect? That originally we got $7. I will let this as a homework. I'm kidding. Let's calculate the expect value of college conditional a high test score. It is the difference between these two categories. You keep high test score constant and you take the difference between college and non-college. It is 18 minus 9.5. The impact of the college degree for people with high test score is 8.5. Now let's calculate the expect value of college for people with a low test score. We apply the same reason. It's the difference between 14 minus 8.5. Now, if you average these two values, what do you get? You get the average causal effect of college, that's 7. 